This short movie will demonstrate how DocumentX can be used to document an XML schema, either directly from an XSD schema file or from a regular XML file that doesn't have a related XSD schema file. The first thing I'm going to do is create a brand new empty project. Call it XSD demo. And once the empty project is loaded, I'm going to use the add XSD schema button here on the project quick start page. This contains a bunch of links to common stuff you might want to do in a brand new project. Uh, I can also find that same command later up on the ribbon here. So add XSD schema. And I'm going to document a sample purchase order schema. So I'm just going to give that name to the schema here. So I'm just going to go ahead and identify the location of my XSD schema file and click OK to add it to the project. I can add any number of XSDs to the project for this demo, I'll just be adding that single purchase order schema. So what DocumentX has done is gone ahead and added an item under my XSD schemas section of the Project Explorer. Um, and if I drill down through that, I can see all of the elements, complex types, etc. contained within that schema. And I can quickly and easily here just untick particular items I might want to exclude from the generated output for that schema. DocumentX has also added a content file to the project and this is where I'll later in the demo be authoring additional content to supplement what's automatically generated but before I do that I'm going to go ahead and do a quick build just to illustrate what DocumentX will generate for you automatically out of the box. So by default DocumentX has generated both in a CHM file which is a compiled help file where the entire help system is contained within a single file and browser help which is pure HTML designed for hosting on a web or intranet site. So if I open up the compiled help file just to illustrate what that looks like we've got a table of contents index search functionality and the plain HTML output which contains the same content but it's pure HTML so it can just be viewed within a browser and hosted on a website. So index and the search. So both these formats contain a table of contents index and search pane so it makes it quick and easy for your users to find the content they're looking for. You might be wondering where this descriptive content that I can see already within my generated output is coming from. And the answer to that is that it originates from annotation elements directly within the schema itself. So just to illustrate, this is the source for the XSD schema I'm documenting. And you can see within here, the person who's authored this schema has added annotation elements to pretty much every element within the schema, providing a basic description of that schema element. So this means that much of the authoring effort can be done by the time you build your documentation in Document X. And it means that the person who's closest to the schema, the person who's actually creating it, can contribute to that documentation effort by providing descriptions at the time they're working up the schema. So authoring descriptions within the XSD schema isn't the only authoring option you have available in Document X. You can use the content file editor to override, supplement, or replace the content that's defined in the XSD. And a common approach taken by users Document X is to author the basic summary descriptions in the source and more expansive remarks, see also links, example code within the content file editor. So I'll just demonstrate that idea here by adding an additional remarks section, perhaps I see also linked to one of the types in this schema. So I've opened up the content file uh, for edit here and I can see a similar tree to we see on the Project Explorer here and if I drill down to one of the types contained within my schema here I'm presented with an editor for that particular item within the documentation. We can see that the editor here looks very similar to the generated output we were looking at a moment ago, but it contains these sections bordered by a little uh, grey dotted box that are the editable areas of that particular page. So directly within these uh, boxes I can type my custom content. I can also see above these editable areas the grey background boxes that identify the content that Document X is automatically obtaining directly from the source. So whilst I'm authoring I can see exactly what content is already available so I can avoid duplicating it when I'm authoring. So I'm going to go ahead and actually add some content to the US address complex type here. So I'm going to scroll down through the page to find the remarks section and I'll just add some additional information about this type only basic address details 
So the editor I'm using here is a fully featured HTML editor, so I can include images, I can add markup, I can apply CSS based styles, uh, add tables, bookmarks, um, and use our widget functionality to enable me to add some more complex uh, content within here. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to add some basic text within the remarks section. I'll also add a, just for demonstration, I'm going to add a link, a see also link to another element within this schema, another type within this schema. And we can see that the purchase order complex type is now linked under the see also section here. So if I now switch to preview, I'll be able to see my remarks text that I've added and also the custom see also link that I added alongside the summary, the existing description summary sec section that includes the content that's originated directly from the XSD schema. Now I could also add additional content to the summary section here. So if I wanted to ex expand on the basic summary that's coming directly from the XSD schema, just to expand on the description. And if I switch to preview, I can see that by default, the content coming from the XSD schema and the content I've added are combined, are merged together. Now that's the default behavior within Document X, but I can change that if I wanted to. So I'm just going to illustrate how I do that in the build profile editor. I'm going to go to the XSD schema settings page and I can choose the default um, option for how to combine XSD schema source with the content file source. And I'm going to change that to use as default, which tells Document X to use the source annotations only if content in the content file isn't defined. So if I now switch to preview, I'll see that my custom content overrides what is coming from the XSD. So I'm just going to switch that back to merge because the merge fits my particular requirements a bit better. So beyond the textual content, I can use additional content items here in the content file editor to, uh, for example, exclude items from the content. I can set a, fl a simple flag to exclude items. I can add build flags um, that will, in combination with the filtering page and the build profile editor, allow me to do more complex rule-based filtering. I can also flag items as new so that they're highlighted in the generate output as new items in this particular version of the documentation. Add some custom index keywords for this page. Um, see also links which I've already demonstrated directly within the editor. Or we'll use the content from content item to automatically copy content from an existing item either within this schema or another schema in the documentation to avoid duplication. So in addition to supplementing the automatically generated pages which is what I'm doing within the content file editor I can create brand new uh, manually authored topics and I'll do that just by clicking on the new topic toolbar button and that opens up a new topic editor for our brand new topic and I'm just going to add a background information topic here and in here I can put uh, any conceptual content or background information that might want to supplement what's automatically generated by Document X and again this is a fully featured HTML editor so I can include images, I can use widgets for collapsible sections, drop down sections, uh, light boxes, so on and so forth so I want my new topic to appear in the table of contents, so I'm just going to switch to the table of contents editor here and add it. And the document X placeholder node here is the position in the table of contents at which the automatically generated content will be added, so I'm just going to make sure my topic appears right at the head, my conceptual topic appears right at the head of the table of contents here. So back in the build profile editor here, just to point out that there are several options I can use to customize the content that's automatically generated. I can choose to exclude the breadcrumb section which is this section across the top of the page indicating this item's position in the table of contents. I can choose to disable the overview tree, uh, the source section in the documentation and also on the XSD diagrams page I can customize or disable the generation of the schema diagrams. So beyond the options that are specific to XSD schemas, there are a range of other options in the build profile, profile editor you can use to control the output format and content. I won't be covering those in this movie, but just be aware that the build profile editor here is the place you find those settings. And if I'm looking for something specific, I can always use the search box on the ribbon to try and find it. For example, if I want to know how to change the copyright notice, I type that directly in the search box and just click on the item 
to identify the location in the build profile editor where that option can be found. Or for example, perhaps I want to include a logo in the header of each generated page. You can also use the link from the search results here to search the help hub for information on the keyword you're searching for and that will search both the local help and also our knowledge base and our movies so it provides you with a rich set of resources related to the topic that you're searching for. So I'm going to go ahead and build again this project. And in the generated output we'll now see our manually authored topic at the top here as well as if I drill down to the address complex type the additional content we authored in the content file editor. So that concludes this movie demonstrating how you can use Document X to quickly and easily document an XSD schema. If you've got any questions or suggestions please do contact us either by email to support at innovasys.com or directly from the smile frown support request buttons on the help and support ribbon tab in Document X or Help Studio.